Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Ferraza and I will be lecturing you about all about urology. So let's start with the urologic anatomy. The anatomic structures that generally require urologic management include the kidneys, adrenals, ureters, bladder, prostate, and seminal vesicles. Vas deferens, penis, urethra, scrotum, and testis represents the reproductive organs. So these organs are located primarily in the retroperitoneum or extraperitoneal spaces. However, a transperitoneal approach may be utilized to access the kidney, ureters, bladders, or retroperitoneal lymph nodes during certain urologic operations. The kidneys are paired retroperitoneal organs that are invested in the fibrofatty layer of the tissue known as gerotas fascia. This natural barrier helps to tamponade bleeding and thus may provide renal and hemodynamic protection in cases of renal trauma or a spontaneous renal hemorrhage. It also may assist in preventing tumor invasion into surrounding structures in the case of large renal masses. The kidneys are bordered posterolaterally by the quadratus, quadratus lumborum muscle and posterolaterally and posteromedially by the psoas muscle. Additionally, the diaphragm drapes across the posterior aspect of the superior pole of each kidney. The exact position of the kidney within the retroperitoneum varies during the different phases of respiration, body position, and presence of anatomic anomalies. For example, the kidneys move inferiorly approximately 3 cm, one vertebral body, during inspiration and during changing body position from supine to the erect position. Each kidney measures 10 to 12 centimeters in length, 5 to 7.5 centimeters in width, and 2.5 to 3 centimeters in thickness. Each adult male kidney weighs approximately 125 to 170 grams. The kidney is 10 to 15 grams smaller in females. The right kidney is slightly shorter and wider because of downward compression by the liver that kidneys are relatively larger in children and have more prominent fetal lobulations which generally disappear by the first year of life. In addition, the adult kidneys lateral contour might have a focal renal parenchymal bulge known as the medullary hump. or the dromedary hump, which is more common on the left side and has no pathologic significance. These dromedary humps are thought to be caused by the downward pressure from the liver or the spleen. The left kidney is bordered anterolaterally by, this, anterolaterally by the spleen and descending colon. The pancreatic tail borders the anteromedial left kidney. The right kidney is bordered anterolaterally by the liver and ascending colon. The second portion of the duodenum may be encountered near the right renal vessels and thus sometimes requires anteromedial reflection known as the Cocker maneuver to achieve intraoperative vascular control during right renal surgery. The kidneys are end organs which are responsible for their vulnerability to infarction. The renal arteries extend from the aorta and then branch into several segmental arteries and arterioles before becoming aglomeruli. 
each artery runs posterior to their respective renal veins. Occasionally, an accessory renal artery will arise, but in general, each kidney receives a single main renal artery. Each renal vein drains directly into the IVC and is located anteriorly to its respective renal artery and then when entering the kidney. The right renal vein is much shorter than the left and does not receive collateral venous drainage. The left renal vein passes anteriorly to the aorta and receives drainage from the left gonadal vein. The left inferior adrenal vein and the alumbar vein. The collecting system, which as you can see here, begins as a minor calyx, this one, near the renal papilla and then coalesce into major calyx. The major calyces join to form the renal pelvis, which then tapers down to the ureteropelvic junction from which the ureter emanates. The pelvis is located posterior to its respective renal artery. The adrenal glands is superior to its respective kidney within the gerotus fascia. Adrenal arterial supply arises from multiple sources. The inferior prenic the aortic branches and renal arteri arterial branches. Venous drainage mirrors arterial supply. On the right side, the adrenal glands drains directly into the IVC or inferior vena cava. The right adrenal vein can be quite short, less than one centimeter and can be sourced of a significant bleeding. If inadvertently injured during renal or adrenal surgery. The ureters are smooth muscle based tubular structures that connect the renal pelvis to the bladder. The ureters initially course along the psoas muscle as you can see here and then run distally along the pelvic side wall going through here. They generally pass posterior to the uterine vessels in the female making them susceptible to injury during hysterectomy. The ureters enter the bladder laterally and pass through the bladder wall at an oblique angle which helps prevent reflux of urine during bladder filling. The ureters propel ure urine into the bladder via the ureteral orifice. The blood supply arises from the surrounding vasculature. The proximal blood supply inserts on the medial aspect of the ureter and then arises from the aorta and renal artery. And the distal blood supply inserts laterally and arises from the surrounding iliac vessels and their branches. The arterial supply inserts via a fatty layer of tissue around the ureter and thus surgical preservation of the periureteral tissue is essential to maintain vascularization and ach achieve successful ureteral reconstruction. The bladder is located extraperitoneally in the pelvis and posteriorly to the pubis. A portion of the bladder dome is draped by peritoneum and rupture of injury in this location can result in intraperitoneal urine leakage and subsequent chemical peritonitis. The average adult bladder holds approximately 500 ml of urine. However, in rare cases, capacity can reach up to or greater than one liter in which the case the bladder extends towards the umbilicus the sigmoid colon lies 
adjacent to the bladder in this area and can fistulize to the lateral wall or dome of the bladder in cases of diverticulitis or colon cancer. The rectum lies posteriorly to the bladder in men and then the uterus and vagina lie posteriorly to the bladder in women. The prostate, which is this one, is a walnut-shaped gland that encircles the urethra and is located in males immediately beneath the bladder. The smooth muscle fibers distribute throughout the gland which can contract and facilitate bladder outlet obstruction. The average prostate measures approximately 20 to 30 ml in volume. Puboprostatic ligaments suspend the prostate to the pubis and the in the instance of pelvic trauma, shearing forces can cause disruption of the posterior urethra, known as pelvic fracture urethral injury. The external urethral sphincter houses the membranous urethra and sits down below the apex of the prostate. Vasculature to the bladder and prostate arises from, inter from the inferior and superior vesical arteries which are branches from the internal iliac arteries. The penis is composed of three bodies, two corpora cavernosa, which are responsible for the erection, and corpus spongiosum, which surrounds the urethra and arises to the glans penis. These three extru structures are all encased by skin and dartos fascia, this one, as well as an inner investing layer of fascia called, called the box fascia. The corpora carbonosa are spongy sinusoidal bodies that expand with parasympathetic neural stimulation to create an erection. Thick fascia called tunica albuginea assist in producing rigidity during erection. Each corpus cavernosum features a centrally located cavernosal arteries which arises from the penile artery. A porous septum separates the two corpora and allows transcorporal blood exchange. The corpus spongiosum is located on the ventrum of the penis, which is this one. The corpus spongiosum lacks a top fascia similar to tunica albuginea and thus does not exhibit the same rigidity during erection. The scrotum is a potential space that surrounds the testes, epididymis, and spermatic cords. The scrotum is comprised of many layers aside from the skin and dartos fascia and each derives from a particular layer of the anterior abdominal wall. The external spermatic fascia arises from the external oblique fascia, the cremasteric fascia arises from the internal oblique fascia, and the internal spermatic fascia arises from the transversus abdominis fascia. The testes are separated from the scrotal layers by the visceral parietal layers of the tunica vaginalis between which hydrocils form. The spermatic cord contains the vas deferens, the venous mampiniform plexus and the arterial blood supply of the, to the superior pole of the testis via the three separate sources. The, testic the testicular artery arises directly from the aorta the differential artery which applies the vas deferens arises from the internal iliac artery and the cremasteric artery which applies the cremaster muscle arises from the external iliac arteries. The presence of multiple arterial sources provides collateral flow and prevents ischemia in the event of injury to a particular vascular branch. The venous vampiniform plexus can dilate to form a palpable or visible varicocele which can serve as an etiology 
for chronic testicular pain or infertility.